Well, good morning. Here we are in Eastern Bartonshire. I'm not going to give away too much more. Um, this is a very exciting uh, edition of our Meet the Artist series, one which I've been dying to do, to do for ages, and the first time that the one and only David Smith, RSW, has agreed, you, David. <laughs> agreed to allow a little, sounds glamorous, camera crew into your studio. You co are you comfortable, quite happy? Yes, I'm. <laughs> well, <Over the> moon. <laughs> well, do you know, there's no secret, you know, uh, David and I have a great working relationship. I've been to the studio many times. It's just a total joy to come and see the paintings, you know, which we'll talk about later, David, and you're willing to talk about them. But why I'm saying it's exciting is so many people who are in our mailing list and follow these videos have been saying, when's David Smith, when's David Smith um, going to be showing? Because, you know, You've, you're without doubt, as I say, one of the most successful artists in Scotland at the moment. And even since I've had the gallery four years ago, we've sent your paintings from Chelsea to LA to Cornwall to Skye. You know that, where, where they've ended up. And people just, they, they enjoy everything about them, but they want to know more about you. And what I would like, David, for you to do, if you, because you've, you've, not only are your paintings colourful, you're quite colourful. And I would like for you to explain a little bit about before you became a successful painter, from school days, was there an interest and ability in art, right through to the interesting facts that you studied for some point in Melbourne. And you, there's, there's a few twists along the way. So go ahead. Thanks, David. Uh, I've always been creative since childhood. And my family's creative, come from a creative family. My grandfather painted and my father painted, and my brother is an artist. He studied sculpture at Glasgow, mm -hmm. and he's the head of the art department at Beclair Academy. So I went into the family business as an electrician. I should have went to art school or studied photography or done something like that, but became an electrician. But I always painted. That was always my ambition. That's what, what I always wanted to do. And I immigrated to Australia. And while I was in Australia, I discovered that it was quite easy to do uh, Open University. So I started studying, doing my fine arts degree at La Trobe in Monash House in Melbourne. And did that for a couple of years. And then being young, I decided to travel. But I always had my sketchbooks and I was always painting and drawing. So I was in Australia six and a half years and I came home to Scotland and I got a job at Caledonian University. But I still wanted I I wanted to go to art school, you know. I thought I thought I could get taught how to paint, but basically I, so I'm basically self taught. But what happened was uh, I applied for art school and I got accepted for Glasgow and Edinburgh. Now, Glasgow wanted me to do printmaking because I used to go to the print studio. Oh. And Edinburgh wanted me to paint, but I didn't want to go to Edinburgh. So I went to Glasgow. Now, I was very fortunate. The university, uh, I got two years unpaid leave from, uh, fr from full-time employment. So that was really good, and I went to Glasgow for a while, but I didn't like it. Really? <laughs> no, I was. What I found was, I always I, I got told by some old, old established artists who were following my work, and they said uh, I should have went to uh, Dundee when you know some of the proper, well, not proper artists, but to teach me how to paint. That Alberta you know, influence me. Oh, old Uncle Jordanston type of thing, yeah. Yes, that sort of thing. But when I went to Glasgow, it was the era of the the Turner Prize. Okay. So I was doing things like mixing cement and installations and things like that, and it was it wasn't my bag at all. So you were restricted, really. I was restricted. I was frustrated. I was doing. I was learning more you know, at home, painting on my own and what I was doing at the art school. But it was a good experience. So, and plus, I never had an income. I had no money coming in at all. So, 
I went back to work. I was disillusioned by it. But that was fine. But I just kept painting. But what happened was I put a painting into the RGI first time ever and I won the Cargo Prize, which was a big major award. So I was really pleased with that. And then, then galleries t- took notice and they started contacting me. So it's just kind of snowballed from there. So I ended up getting several awards. Uh, RSW, uh, Paisley Art Institute, Royal Scottish Academy, and I got a painting in, in the Royal Academy. So I decided, I went part-time at university, so what I was doing was working in the evenings as an electrician and painting during the day. Yeah. I was getting a bit of a salary to finance this. What age were you when you were a, became a proper full-time artist? Uh, 30s. Yeah. It's in my 30s. I think it gives inspiration yeah. to so many other people, David, as well. And, mm. you know, because some certain people go on about the snobbery of art school and qualifications, don't they? But, but, yeah, yeah. And that's why, I, you know, that never really, I wasn't influenced with that. I just wanted to work. I've always had a kind of work ethic, being, being a tradesman. That's why I work so hard in here. I'm, I, I'm up early in the morning. I come in here, I feel as if I'm going to do a day's work, and I think it reflects. Well, I'd like paintings. you now, David, to talk about your fantastic paintings, because they, you, you don't sort of paint to order. You paint things you like, things you love, and you're incredibly outdoorsy. Mm. And, what, you know, you're known, I suppose, throughout the world. I've said where, where our clients are living and they've bought your paintings. I would say you're known as a Scottish contemporary en plein air yeah. artist. And this whole, I'll be honest, before I had the gallery, I probably wouldn't have known exactly what the whole en plein air thing means. So tell people how you paint and look at some of the props around us mm. as you're seeing how you get inspiration. Yeah, basically plein air. I mean, you're working, basically you're working outside. Mm. It can be difficult in Scottish weather, but I've done it all my life. Basically, I start with my sketchbooks, this is like a visual diary for me. Yeah. So I always have a sketchbook in my rucksack in my pocket whenever I go away. And I just draw all the time. And what it does, if you see something, for example, <coughs> I'll show you this one here, David. Uh, bowling, bowling Harbour. Bowling. Yeah, near Dumbarton. Near Dumbarton. And I love painting the boats. So I would go down there and I would use my sketch pads and do drawings and get my eye in. And because I know the place quite well, I then, I'll take my canvas down and my paints and I'll just work on site as best I can. And usually the paintings get finished in the studio because of the weather. Occasionally I can finish so big paintings in the outside. This suitcase. This my is, suitcase. You're almost like a sort of, it's like almost what an old-fashioned travelling salesman would have had. Uh, you've taken the words right out of my mouth, David. So, <laughs> just an old suitcase. Yeah. I picked I think up. what the people watching this video are going to see so as soon as, David, they're going to, Tom will do a few little flicks through your incredible sketchbook and show the paints and everything that you work on. But going going back, we'll talk about maybe what's in the studio at the moment so you okay. paint on plan air you come back with your with your paintings to finish off here mm. so behind me do you want to talk about this painting yeah that's really typical of the big uh, blue paintings that i do in the big skies to give it a sense of space it's up in the west coast which western seaboard which i paint all the time just before you come to Liverpool, near Inverlale, down in the shore, down in the front there, there's just this tiny little harbour with some boats, mm-hmm. and I've been there quite a lot. And you will take your camper van up there, won't you? And you'll regularly sleep outside. Yeah, yeah. And because people come into the gallery and they see the big sky paintings, yeah. and you're seeing things in the sky that often other people don't. Very much so. I mean, once you start painting, you will never look at anything the same way again. The sky, you look at the skies differently. Uh, 
I mean, when you're talking about the camper van, a lot of times what I do is I take my tent and I'll, 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 I'll go into kind of wild places off the beaten track and try and paint. It's pretty difficult. It's difficult to put into words, isn't it? Difficult to put into words. Because... Well, See, it's been tenuous, David. Yeah. It's quite hard. And it just comes to me naturally because I've been doing it for so long. But that's the whole point, David, because without me being too devilish here, I know quite a number of... Don't worry, it's not any of artists in my stable, but I'm aware of people who try and copy your work. And one of the girls in, the, in, in my own team said, there's somebody copying David Smith's work, but they're, they, they're nothing like your paintings because you've got lots of layers yeah, and paint, absolutely. and you'll go back, and you'll go back. And you've said to me often, there could be four or five layers of paint. Well, oh, sometimes a lot more than that, David. What's your record? I don't know, but a lot of times, I can, I'll can i paint straight from the tube. I'll open up a tube, I'll paint, put it straight onto the canvas, rather than work on the palette, and just work it in really thickly. I mean, some of the paintings, the bigger paintings I've done, have been sitting in the studio for a couple of years. Let's jump to this one, David. Here, um, Tom. Tom will probably drop it in more closely because that's actually a painting near Ballater, isn't it? It's near Ballater, yeah. So, how did the idea for that come about? Just the colours. The colours caught my eye in the autumn, and it was just the sky. It was an incredible colour. But as you know, David, I paint up there quite a lot. But I love painting trees. I think they're peaceful. And I just loved, I loved the textures and putting the paint on really thickly. One of these paintings that you did of Ballater, but I think you've maybe done three or four, is actually now in a house in Calgary. Oh, yeah. And um, the person who went, she told me that she almost burst into tears. All right, we sent it over in a crate to um, Calgary. And when it got out there, she just said it, it's just very, very happy memories of D-Side. But I know that style of painting, um, you paint regularly. Tell me, David, how has your style, because I've only known you for four years, um, has your style changed over the years? It's got a lot stronger, yes. More okay. more, um, more abstract or not? A lot, a lot looser. Listen. It's not so, much, not so much abstraction, it's more painterly. I'm using the paint, I'm flowing with the paint. I'm very, getting a lot more confident with it. And as you were saying earlier, different layers and I'm using bolder colours, a lot more confidence. You know, I'm looking down here, at, there's a lobster pot on the floor, and, you know, I would never have looked at a lobster pot before and seen turquoises and oranges and almost sort of dirty pinks and things in it. Yeah, and that's yeah. what people really do when, when they get the painting into their house. It might be above an antique bureau, it might be in a Kevin MacLeod grand design house, mm. but they see more and more the longer they have the painting there. Well, that's the difference, David, with painting plain air rather than being a studio artist. When you're working outside, you see the proper colours. Is that what it is? Yeah. And you remember you and the bring colour. them all back. And that's maybe when the people that try and copy it just don't get that. Yeah. Well, I also wanted to talk, um, David, you, you know, you're very down to earth and you're very self-deprecating, but, you know, your paintings are in major corporate collections from the House of Lords, BBC, Swiss Consulate, the Law Society, you know, that's quite a, a tribute, if you like, um, to you. You've handled lots of commissions for our clients. Does that give you a buzz about where they might be hanging? Oh, it's fantastic, yeah. Really good. I really appreciate it. You know, it's a great feeling knowing that somebody appreciates your hard work. You know, I took a painting to um, a place called Archerfield recently for a right. client, and... Um, the husband actually said to me, he said, there's something about the painting. He's a busy guy in finance and said to me, and he, he, he used the word and he said, I don't really understand. He said, it's the karma it brings to the house. That's a compliment to you, isn't it? It's a real compliment. I, I think that's a reflection in the way I paint because I go into a, a different place, a different world when you're painting. You know, you, a happy place that maybe reflects and blue is a very common colour. They always say that it's a strange one. Uh, men like to paint blue paintings. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know that you you did a commission for one of my clients, and it's in a brand new house in the Clarn area, and you loved doing that. It was about eight feet wide, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a big painting. And yeah. 
it, it's with fabulous sort of um, the the people have great taste, and they've got wonderful um, like Swedish furniture and things like that. And I remember you saying to me, it just seeing it in that environment, almost like a it could have been in some Dutch museum or something like that as well. It just worked. But even in a sort of more modest house that I have, I've got your paintings on the wall. They they do relax you. Um, is that like one of the, the best compliments you could have or are there even better compliments that you could get in no, your that's, own painting? That's a nice, that? that's a good compliment, yeah. I'm happy with that. <laughs> well, it's quite funny as we're sort of rounding up here sitting in David Smith RSW studio as um, to listen to him. And I won't forget, you know, about your happy place. That'll make me a little bit worried at times. But in, in your um, happy uh, place, David, what are your plans for the future? Just to keep painting, keep it simple. You're not one to travel abroad more, because you did paint quite a lot oh, in no, France. I'd like to travel abroad more. I painted in the south of France. Yeah, we've and sold quite a few. In yeah, there. and it was very enjoyable and very successful. Were and you, was, were you not taking your bike over there? And yeah, I was cycling around the Canal du Midi, and uh, that ended up <laughs> badly. <laughs> the Cal de Canal du Midi, <laughs> serious accident. You weren't trying to paint cycling, were you? No, no, no. <laughs> so maybe maybe a bit of travelling, but really, people have often said to me, "We hope he doesn't change. We want to see landscapes. We want to see the way the houses are." So really, yeah. carry on as long as you can and be one of the artists. Paint till you drop. Yeah, what what's great is, uh, is when you go into a, a studio or you go into uh, a place and you can recognise your paintings. People know it's a Davy Smith. Mm -hmm. People know. But that's, that's good, because I've created my own style. And the fish, you know, I'm looking at the fish right behind you, David, you know. Mm. There's, you know, I've seen, we've sold them to people who have restaurants, you know. And uh, somebody said to me recently with a house in Ely, oh, we, we don't really get abstract. Now, would, would you call these abstract? I don't know if I would say abstract. No, they're not abstract. But they're just... Very painterly. They're very painterly, and they're happy paintings. You yeah. know, they're cheery. They're a wee bit different. They look phenomenal in dining spaces. The colours are lovely. The yeah. colours are bright, strong. The mackerel's great. Fish are so... Are, are really colourful creatures. I'm, I'm going to pick one up, David. This one here. Oh, right. Which is... I mean, just look at the striking colour of the blue. What, is that mackerel? It's two mackerel, yes. yes. Um, you know, I've seen these in so many places. And again, they just bring happiness. So anyway, I'm going to round up just now because David Smith in his happy place with his happy paintings. This has been um, fantastic. I hope it's not been too much pressure because you weren't awfully keen to do this to start with. Um, but, um, no, this is good, David. It's good. This. Well, all I can say is to David Smith at his studio in Eastern Bartonshire, thank you very much for agreeing to join our Meet the Artist series. Well, thank you, David. Pleasure. Thank you.